Config 2024 came with so many new updates, but today we're gonna talk about Figma slides. As usual, there is a link in the description to sign up to Figma if you've never used it before. Let's jump in. So I'm now in Figma and you can see that already we see something new. I've got a new design file, a new fig jam board, and I've got a new slide deck. It's new, it's orange, it's fabulous. So in order to add a new one, I could just double tap on that and then I get all these templates and I can select one of them to start off with. And if I scroll down, you see there's so many here. You can just look at them and decide which one you want to start with. Let's say I want to start with this one and then it's going to appear there. Now I've jumped us into a deck where I've already added a few slides from the same template just so we have a more kind of substantiated deck to play around with. So on the left panel we've got all the different slides and when you click on them it kind of zaps you through. When you're in this view you've got two separate layouts. When you're in a side view you can't, I mean I, I'm zooming in and out right now and it, I can't do much of it. Um, if I want to just see the canvas like I normally would I need to switch to the grid view so that's shift and a full stop in order to do that swap, or you can do the swap here as well. Um, and then you can just zoom out as normal. Now, right now in the grid view, I'm seeing all of the slides next to each other. And you see if I hover over here, I can add a slide in between, or if I hover next to them, I can do that as well. Really cool, I can just swap between them. So I can kind of do that and swap around. And also if I select a few of them and move them down, you see I'm sort of creating like sections. And then next to the sections, I get this dragger and then I can move the sections around as well. So already so, so cool. So on the design panel, we can see now that we're in slide number one and we see what style of template we have. Now, because we only have one, the drop down has nothing later on, we'll see a few more. But you do have this shuffle. So there are a few different theme colors within this template. And if I click on that, it will just shuffle between them. So you see it's kind of changing everything around. I can also override this, so I can select my own. Now, when you click on the color, and you'll notice this within slides in general, a lot of the selection is quite limited. You can always escape the limitation and select whatever you want, but you will get a sort of simplified view. So for example, when I click on this, I've got template colors, which are the colors that are used elsewhere on this template. I can go in here and override it as we would normally, but I can just select from these, which I think is really good because people using slides aren't necessarily gonna be full designers. So it's good to have that. So let's say I'm just using this. Um, and then something really cool that they did show at the demo as well is right now I'm on a light color, so the text is dark. But if I go to a dark color, you see automatically the text changes. And what's super cool is it changes within the theme. So you'll notice it didn't go white. It went to like a lightish green that is still like with enough contrast that we can read what it says, which I just think this is so, so cool. I do also have the options here to change it to a gradient and you see it just kind of automatically selected something. It's the same gradient picker as we have in Figma. And I also have the ability to select an image. So let's see what happens when I select an element on the page. I'm gonna start by selecting this text box and you can see here in the text section, I've got a limited selection of sort of my text styles, I guess. And I can just swap between them. Yeah, so it's giving me lots of options because that's how it's set up, um, but it's still not giving me all of the options in the world. If I do wanna be able to really select things manually, I can click on show details, and then I have a normal text on the design panel like I did before. I can change the font, I can change the font family, and you can see now that I did that, I'm just gonna make this bigger, you see it says edited, so it kind of knows that I'm using the style, but I'm not really using the style exactly. And then it shows up here in the custom. Now you see here that I can also add a text link. So for example, if I want the word theme to link to slide number four, I could just do that. And then whether I'm in the prototype or if I'm just looking at the presentation, when I click over here, it will take me to slide number four. So most of the Figma AI features won't be released yet and they'll be in a sort of beta that you can sign up to a waitlist for, but one of them is actually already live through slides. So if I select this text box right here, and let's say I want to change the tone a little bit, I can select this AI button over here to adjust the tone. And I get this sort of like graph and let's say I want to make this a bit more professional. So I move it over there, it will think for a second. And now it's changed it to a concise summary of upcoming events. Let's say I want to make it a lot more casual. A quick look at what's next. I want to make it more expanded. I want to make it more concise. This is so cool. I mean, this is, I love it. I love that it's just integrated in there. And of course, it's in a really fun UI because Figma. 
Okay, moving on, let's go to another slide. Uh, I can see that like when I select certain things, I do get a little shadow thing that comes up. So you see I can add a bit of shadow onto my text. Uh, you can't really see it, it's a bit subtle, but I can change the percentage so I can make it go a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can also add a border. I've got a solid one. I have a big dash and I've got a small dash. And that's kind of, again, with the making it more concise. Also notice that it says border and not stroke because this isn't for designers. This is for the normal people who do not know that stroke means border. Now on this page, I want us to just add something. So let's add a shape onto here. I'm gonna select a rectangle. I'm gonna drop it in and let's see how it reacts. So in the design panel, I don't have many options. I do see that I still have selection colors. I've got a border, I've got some corner rounding, which is fun and opacity. But if I click into it, I can actually write inside of this shape, similar to the shapes you have in Fig Jam. So I can write, hello, oh, this is so cool. If I keep typing, it will expand the square. And then if I select the square or the rectangle, I can sort of move it around and the text will move dynamically. So very similar to the ones we have in Fig Jam. So as we saw in these slides, we are quite limited in what we could do. We can open up like the more panels to see a bit more information. But what if I wanna fully design this screen and just have access to all of the features? So at the bottom in this new toolbar, we have a design mode. And if I toggle that, it just brings me into basically normal Figma, at least on the panels and the toolbar. So you can see now here I've got design and I've got all the things that I'm used to. I'm not super used to them because this is a new UI, but everything is there. And then here on the left, I also have layers at the bottom. So if I untoggle that, um, and I just go back into this slide, you see that everything is now split up as I'm used to as a designer. So for example, I can select these two and then add an auto layout. It now lives inside of the layout section. I can, let's say, give it a fill color back with the word stroke. I still have access to all of the colors that come with the template. They just live inside of the styles or kind of the variables. So we're used to this, nothing new. Let's say I want to add some padding. I'm gonna add five pixels of padding, make this a bit wider, give it maybe some rounded corners maybe a bit more, let's make it 99. So I can still do all of the things I'm used to do on Figma. All I need to do is just change this toggle. Now let's add a new slide. So in order to do that, I just need to click on this plus and it will add a blank slide. Let's have a look at the different things we have in the toolbar. So we've played quite a lot with tech. Let's have a look at image. When I click on image, it will open the kind of finder window straight away. I'm gonna choose one of my emojis and just drop it in there. And you'll see that we've got quite a lot of new things in the panel on the right, which is really fun. So firstly, just the basics, you know, fill, fit, crop, tile. But then underneath, I've got overlay and blur. So in overlay, I can just create an overlay over my image, which is something we need to do so, 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 so much. So it's really cool that we just have this easy access to it. I can also change the color of the overlay so I can make it, you know, a specific color. And then I can also add a blur. So I could just do that and just blur it automatically. If I were to go into design mode, I could control this just from here, you know, effects, layer blurs, drop shadows, all of the stuff, but you'll notice that it just added an overlay on top of it. So it's just a second fill color. Next on our toolbar, we've got the shapes, which we've looked at a little bit, and then we've got tables. Now these tables are very similar to tables that live in Fig Jam right now. So you can add a row or add a column just by hovering next to it. Um, if I select a row, I can change its color. You can't change colors of individual cells, but you can of a row or a column. And then if I grab it, I can just move it around. I can also change the width and height of it, which is can be really useful. Um, so yeah, it's the same thing as tables in Fig Jam at the minute. They only accept text and you can format them, but they're a bit limited on the formatting. And I'm gonna show you another way to add a slide that already has a template on it. So for example, if I go into new slide over here, I'll leave my template and so I can go into another template. Let's say I'll go into this one and let's see. Okay, let's say I want something like this. So I want this slide, it's been dropped in, but obviously it doesn't really match the rest. So now this is where this template style comes in. If I click on this drop down, now I can see both of the styles that I have within this presentation. I could change this one to the template that I've used everywhere else. And the minute I do that, you see the colors change and it now fits with the rest of my slides. 
Again, with the shuffle, I can click on it until I get kind of just the right match, something that feels best. Now I wanna show you two different ways that we can bring prototypes into our slides to make them interactive. The first way is kind of the basic way. So I'm gonna go into a separate Figma file and I just have this kind of frame here and it's already prototyped just to do some scrolling. It doesn't do much else. I can just copy it and then paste it into my slide. As simple as that, yeah? I can give it a bit of styling if I want. So for example, I do wanna round the corners a bit more, great. Right now, this is just a frame. I can't do much with it here. If I turn on design mode, it's as it would be in a normal Figma file. But if it's not in design mode, I can't really do much with it. So here comes my second way. So over here, we've got a button for live interactions. Now in it, we've got some other stuff that we'll look at in a second, but at the bottom right, you have prototype. Now, if I tap on that, I can add a prototype using a link. So I'll go back into my file here and then under prototype, I'll make sure that I have a flow and then I'll copy the link to that and paste it in here. So now that it's here, you'll notice that I can already scroll. So it's kind of like a live prototype within the slide. It does make it a bit hard to drag sometimes. So be warned, um, and I can't do anything to it. So you see when I select it, I don't have any options on my design panel. And if I go into design, it, it doesn't have any options. Yeah, it's just an, an embed. Yeah, so there's nothing there. It's not a live designed frame like this one. This is just kind of just sitting there. I can't even round the corners, I don't think. So I'm going to play just this slide. I'm gonna click on play and present. And then you can see another difference. So the one that I just dropped in, it's here, I can play with it, I can do whatever I want with it, just as I would if I was in a normal Figma prototype. But this one is a bit different. This one has a sort of target on it and I can click on it and then it will load it for me. Now, if you have multiple people viewing this presentation at the same time, each person can interact with this prototype at their own pace, yeah? So they can just open it and play with it and then you can also follow them along and see kind of which point of the prototype they're on. Let's look at some more live interactions that we can add into our prototype. So I'm going to add um, just a new slide over here. And then in live interactions, I've got a few different things. So I can add an alignment, which is just a scale. Um, I'll just leave it as is for now. I don't want to change anything. I can add some stamps um, and then I can also add a poll. So I can add all of these. And then once I play the prototype, I can interact with them. And, and anyone that has a presentation open can also interact with them, which is just really great. I also have a plus button here where I can add assets very similar to Fig Jam. So for example, I can add my own. I'm going to add my own doodle arrows that I made in a video way back when. You have a link to watch that if you want. And also a link in the description to get these arrows if you want them too. So I'll click add to file and then I have them in here and these are basically just components. So if I drag one in, for example, this one, you'll notice on the design panel that it's just like any other kind of component that we're used to. I can change the style between like normal textures and thin and I can also change the direction of it just cause that's how it's set up. But I can change the instances like we would have been used to in a normal Figma file. Finally, let's look at some animations. So in order to add animations, you just go into animate and then you select the style. Now from the drop down, you see we've got all the basics that we're used to. I'm gonna select smart animate, even though there's not a lot that's kind of set up for that, but we're gonna select it anyway. Um, you'll notice that we don't have all the extra bits. So I can't change the bezier and make it bouncy, but slides are still in beta. So I'm sure they're gonna add all of this stuff bit by bit. I'm going to apply it to all the slides and then I'm just going to play it. So I can present with notes, which basically just kind of shows me the notes on the side, but I'll just pre present normally for now. Click on R to go back to the start. And then I'm just moving with my arrow keys through my presentation. And we can see everything. Now I did set this up for a bit of small animate. So the next one woo, kind of does a little zoop. and it is as nice and smooth as we're used to with small animate. Then we got to the prototype, which we've seen before. And in this page, you can see that I can interact with this. So I can say yes or hell yes. I can put myself on the scale on how much I agree or disagree with something. And then I can also stamp if I agree. Now, of course, I'm the only one right now on this presentation, but if there were more people, they could interact with this as well. And I would see that too. And that is that. I hope you enjoyed this kind of quick overview of Figma slides. I'm sure there's so much more to learn with it. It is still in Vita, so I'm sure Figma will be releasing more and more updates to it as the weeks go by. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments what you loved most about Config and what you're most excited to try. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
See you at the next one.